Yeah, so I think this will be a little fun. I'd love to pull at the thread a little bit more of some of the notable standout trends that you're seeing at a per channel level. A lot of our audience are growth marketers, some working in PC, some in mobile, some in both. I know our team has a, a lot more data and like a much larger percentage of our games portfolio at uptick is in the mobile free to play side. I'd say we have like the minority of data on PC, so it might be fun to kind of compare some notes here of the big trends you saw. We just talked about one that's a little different, PC and mobile for Twitter, but yeah, what are maybe some of the other standout trends you saw at individual channel level? And maybe let's compare some notes there. Yeah, sure. I think the biggest standout one that jumped out to me when we first started reviewing the data was just how prevalent Meta and Google are as part of the overall media share are for our customers. So Meta has something like 80, almost 90% of all advertisers are spending money on Meta for their games. And then Google is second in that, and it's about 80%. That's a huge share. It's kind of like that, and then a huge cliff that drops off. Yeah, I would assume it's probably similar for mobile, and probably also includes Apple as well for you guys. But interested to see how big of a media share those platforms show for you. Yeah, I would say a big thing that happened with the big two there on mobile is just a lot of advertiser capitulation, giving up on Google ads on iOS. So mm. with the privacy changes of scan uh, and deprecation of IDFA, which we've talked about ad nauseum on the podcast, I think there was several years of teams beating their head against the wall, still trying to figure out ways to do productive media buying on Facebook and Google on iOS. The mobile industry is candidly just done a horrible job of adopting to that. Apple didn't do us any favors. We have an innate bias here at Uptick because we built tech to, to solve for this. But outside of that, just when we meet teams, they've just capitulated and stopped doing large-scale media buying on Google more so because Google is the lowest opt-in of any of the channels because YouTube as a sub-segment of Google traffic actually does not ask for user consent to be tracked. So literally none of those users are opted in for tracking Whereas on Facebook, we get about one out of seven users that we have the double opt-in from because Facebook does at least prompt for that consent. But it's hard for a lot of marketers who are used to working with perfect data to now only have the opt-in and monetization data for one out of seven users. So I'd say that's maybe the big delta in mm -hmm. trends of what we saw on the mobile front and some of the trends that you guys are discussing on the PC front. Yeah. So we had a drop-off for the IDFA deprecation for players who basically only interacted via like Facebook mobile app, but for PC and console advertisers, most of their campaigns are desktop focused, even if they're not desktop exclusive, they're desktop focused. So even if we lost a lot of sort of trackable players from a pure mobile space, they didn't make up the largest subset of addressable audience. So while it did have an effect, it wasn't six sevenths of the players didn't all of a sudden disappear from reporting when Facebook sort of like turned that non opt in feature on. Got it. Yeah, I mean, well, I was going to say one of the other channels that is obviously very important for us is TikTok. That's been a huge, just most ascendant channel on the mobile side. I know this is also really relevant in, to your audience. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we could talk a little bit about TikTok. So it makes a, a big part of our customers' plans for both the performance advertising aspect of things and also the influencer side as well. So we're kind of seeing a lot of TikTok mm -hmm. activity in both of those different types of efforts for performance advertising in particular, I think probably on last year's report, we were just starting to see a lot of more major advertisers start to pick up TikTok as a platform. So this would have been going into late 2022. I think a lot of people saw how performant that was and that there was some opportunity there. And a lot more people adopted TikTok as a platform this year. So it's different types of content. There are different challenges that we've seen advertisers run into when trying to make ads for this platform, but there is a lot of space there to try to capture new players. So we've seen a lot of our customers have success with it. Yeah. And I would actually really agree from what we've seen on the PC side of our client base here at Uptick. It really surprised us actually the first time because the first couple of clients of ours that we wanted to test TikTok for PC games, they kind of begrudgingly allowed us to, we just wanted to get some data on it because it's counterintuitive. TikTok Essentially being a mobile primary experience. Mobile exclusive. I actually don't even think they have a web client, do they? they have uh, a there is a website. Yeah. yeah, but it's very reduced functionality. It's a bad experience. Yeah, it's definitely not how most people are consuming TikTok content. And we found, shockingly, that for a number of our tests, it was actually more cost efficient to bring a user through a mobile TikTok flow 
where they still have to come back to their PC separately and install the game using game site tracking for some of our partners, a shout out. This was more cost effective than driving from a PC first competitor, such as PC targeting on Meta or on Google. For anyone listening, this is like a very big tip for your testing of PC marketing. If you have not tried marketing TikTok mobile advertising flows to PC games, even if they're not on mobile at all, is very much worth testing. I'd be curious what your opinion is on that, because one thing that I've noticed, mm -hmm. it's remarkable to me, the power of the targeting that they have. I mean, that's the name of their entire platform is like the algorithm to get content in front of you that you care about. Obviously, that has kind of carried over to the advertising side of things. The way they're able to target user interests is pretty impressive for a platform that's so young. I'm curious if that's what you were kind of attributing some of that performance to, if there was something else unique that you did that you think was really powerful for those campaigns that you said did very well. I wish I could say that there's like a ton of uptick secret sauce on this, but, you know, we try to be very, very candid. You know, there's certain advertising channels where either the human operator part or the layer of third party tools can add a lot of value to the optimization cycle for Meta, Google, TikTok, these channels just have badass algorithms. I always say it's more akin to animal husbandry. It's like different operators will get different results. I see Adam wincing, but just roll. I'm just, like, I'm just like, it's not a relatable analogy for most of you here. Because like look, for me, I'm like, it's not a hard thing. Is that an easy thing? I don't have a lot of experience. I, I, I guess it's hard. Okay, it's hard. Apparently you only- You better always do what you want, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I take for granted that everyone else grew up with like a hundred homing pigeons, a dozen chickens, and other various yeah. farm animals. I would say the one thing that I think Warren uh, is being slightly modest about for us is like, we do have a bunch of creatives who are very, very entrenched in TikTok. I understand how the creative right. system works there. That's yes. different than the power of the algorithm. Well, well if, if I may be allowed to complete my animal husbandry analogy. Yeah, so okay. it's less about pulling the levers and more about what you feed the algorithm and the cues that you give the algorithm. And every one of those little signals mean a ton because the algorithm is so powerful. Whereas like if you're buying on a large scale programmatic network from hundreds of thousands of unique sources, an additional level of optimization on top of what the ad network is doing can be super powerful and really accelerate things. In this case, just feeding a more engaging creative or just picking a smarter behavioral trait in the game user flow for an optimization signal these are the things that massively move the needle and let the algorithm do the rest. So that's where the animal husbandry analogy comes from is it's more like how you coax it to do the thing. It's not that you're manually pulling a ton of levers to do it. See, the feedback loop. I think that that's something yeah. that you will find almost across the board with the types of channels that make their way into these reports is that one, they have really strong audiences and they know a lot about their audiences. And then two, almost all of them have those very strong feedback loops where you can feed conversion data back to them and they can fine tune those algorithms typically on your behalf. There are some manual options that you can do there as well, but to make sure that you're reaching the right audiences, the ones that are most interested in your game, the ones that are most likely to spend money or keep coming back, whatever the particular goals of the campaign are. Cool. Well, I think the last main traditional user acquisition channel that's worth discussing before we talk about influencers, which I think is definitely worth us doing, just given your guys' depth of knowledge there, is Reddit, which is obviously very, very relevant for the PC and console audience. So you want to talk a little a bit about how you're seeing PC and console marketers leverage Reddit, what the effectiveness is there? Yeah. The things that we've seen a lot this year, you know, Reddit has been trending up the past couple of years that we've done these reports. And it's actually remarkable because they're still building out a lot of the support for some of that optimization piece that we were talking about that some of the other platforms already have. And they're still punching in this weight class, which is actually pretty great to see. And I know that they're building some of those things to come out soon. So we expect that this will only get better. But I think the thing that Reddit has going for it that we saw a lot of advertisers use this year are a couple of different things. One, the community aspect there is very strong. And Reddit like all of these other platforms, knows a lot about their community and they have the tools for these communities to pop up organically. Their advertising offers some pretty unique ways to reach different types of communities, reach adjacent communities, which may be something we'll talk about the influencer side is something that's often interesting to us to find is that sometimes the 
best place to fish is right next to where you think all the fish are going to be. Mm -hmm. And so those adjacent communities tend to be really high performing and they have some really unique ways to reach those things like audience takeovers, ways where you can reach an entire genre or entire subject, ways that you can reach users within the actual comment section within those threads, just really unique ways that you don't really find those on all of the other platforms very consistently. So I think because of all of this, our advertisers have found some great performance on Reddit. And as they continue to mature some of these tools for the performance advertising ecosystem, we expect that next year they'll probably do just as good, if not even better. Yeah, Christian, I think you made some really good points there. I mean, to me, Reddit is a little bit of uh, not necessarily the inverse, like Reddit has such an amazing user base for people working in gaming. But you alluded to this, Christian, I'll say it a little more explicitly, they're really behind um, those other networks we just mentioned as far as like how powerful their algorithm is to kind of do the work for you. Mm -hmm. So we find it is one of those channels where a lot more can be controlled or needs to be managed by them in order to get a more optimal results. But it sounds like, you know, you guys are obviously pretty close to Reddit team and a lot of this stuff is in development. If they do get a powerful programmatic element to their buying, I think Reddit could really come from behind it to become a super meaningful network. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think they just have a couple of big advantages, right? Like they have mm -hmm. PC. The audience of people who play PC games yeah. are just more likely to be Reddit users than like Twitter or like overlap, you know? Yeah. Not compared to Facebook.com, Facebook, it does not have the same penetration of PC gamers, at least in terms mm -hmm. of like daily or weekly logins. And then I think the thing that has changed more anecdotally, the performance I've seen is just more investment in the right creatives. And Reddit is different in that, like, obviously yeah. you're not going to take your creative from google and throw it on reddit but but figured out what actually works and feels organic and i think that's you know true on most of these platforms mm -hmm. and tiktok especially but i think tiktok and reddit are the two where like the delta between a good and a bad creative is just so wide where i think sometimes you know a google search ad or whatever it's like okay how different is each of these words maybe marginally but how different is a reddit creative that you look and go ooh, that's cringe versus like oh i thought this was an organic post about some interesting right. game i was going to check out the fact that it said sponsored or promoted, like I didn't even really notice that. So um, hmm. I, I do think they've been around longer, more people have done it. Their team is helpful in pointing you in the right direction as well. But a lot of it comes down to good creative. It's a good point, Adam. And looking through some other data in your report, one thing you guys touched on was just sort of the TikTok ads becoming more effective as a channel. And I think you guys alluded to it, but I think it's really as we as marketers use these channels for a while, we move from just slamming our defaults go to ads in, into that channel to learning the nuances of how people use that channel, the kind of content that feels native to them and making custom ads that speak to those users more. So with TikTok now being relevant for several years, everyone knows that you need to make very bespoke native feeling content for it. And Reddit feels like that same story, but maybe just a year or two behind where I definitely see the same thing as you mentioned, Adam, of like a higher percentage of the ads really starting to feel native. I am sure along with that, the efficacy of those ads are also increasing. Yeah, you cringe less. Yes. <laughs> it's also a funny place because it's like probably the place where the text actually matters the most out of like <laughs> any platform by far. Mm -hmm. is, you know, usually we say it's text doesn't really matter much, but in Reddit it sure. super, super does. Yeah, I scroll and when you see words that don't look like a Reddit post, you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. No, we're so trained anyway. 